Today, we're looking at a gray ink from Papier Plume, Oyster Gray. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, there's timestamps down below so that you can skip around, but if you got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, if you're interested, you can follow me on Instagram, and if you're new here, I would invite you to subscribe. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put the ink into this Lamy All-Star with a broad nib, wrote with it for a day, and used it to take the notes for this video. I standardized my first writing sample by using Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper on all of the tests that I do. I do use other papers, and some of those will show up later in the video. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form, so it came in a vial like this. And to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, it has some shading in that you can see that papier is definitely darker than the word oyster. Okay, so there is some there. The extra fine is about the same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen. Again, there's shading, and I want to just go sort of, in that I see darker areas, but mostly it's dark. The word quick is entirely dark, but brown goes dark to light. Fox goes dark to light. So there is some shading. I'm just not able to easily pinpoint it other than very dark spots. Six seconds to dry. Medium is slightly lighter than the extra fine, but no feather spread, halo sheen. The shading comes across very nicely here. Brown goes dark to light. Quick goes uh, light to dark. Lazy goes darker to lighter. So very nice. Fox, light to dark. Ten seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine shows no real color variation. The medium shows tons, and that's what we got in the writing. Tomoe River. No bleeding. Very slight Tomoe River ghosting. Very slight. The 1.1 is no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Now the extra fine is slightly lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, nine seconds to dry. Medium is ever so slightly lighter than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 15 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no real color variation. We're really not getting it in the writing. And Rhodia, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Now the extra fine is a little lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen. It does offer shading in the same form of dark letters. Like the L in lazy, the word the is very dark. The K in quick, the B in brown, or the F in fox. All very dark letters. Six seconds to dry. Medium, same tone as the extra fine, with no feather spread, halo sheen, same type of shading. You get to spot the very dark letters. X in fox, B in brown, K in quick, the H in the, so it's there, and nine seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine shows no real color variation, although we got a little. The medium shows much more, but we still got the same kind of color variation on the two of them. I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we saw that that ink really bonded with this paper very quickly. The gray is there and not budging a whole lot. But as it pushes up, it's interesting because we see a purple, a very light purple. And then we see a water separation and a very bright turquoisey green at the top. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. That gray is much more there, a lot less, barely any of it moved. The purple is lighter that's pushed up, but that green that's across the top is more noticeable and still has the water separating it from the purple. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. 
looking at the highlighter, it performed as well as I expected. It really did. It did very well here. I would feel safe using this in a note-taking situation. Now, water is breaking up some of the darkest parts off that ink, but not a whole lot. The same problem's going on with pen flush. It's really not making this ink go away. It makes me feel the need to go towards the one-third bleach solution. I did have to use the one-third bleach solution. Uh, it was a little in there in the Lamy converter. But I just put it quickly through, and then I immediately flushed that pen with water so that I didn't rust any of the metal bits. But bleach did completely obliterate it off the page, which in this case wound up being a good thing. I needed it. For the inks I tested, I found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Now I'm going to link the video that shows how I do my testing and calculations. Papier Plume's Oyster Gray has a viscosity of 2.59, making it normal. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. I average all of those. Now for the inks I've tested, I've found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Papier Plume's Oyster Gray has an average dry time of 9 seconds making it a faster drying ink. Instead of finding inks that look like Papier Plume's Oyster Gray, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went for a nice green, and I chose Diamine's Dark Green, although it's not really as dark as you would hope. The second writing sample is done on Twisby, Leuchtturm 1917, and 28 pound copy paper. Here we're looking at Twisby notebooks. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. Now the extra fine is about the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, but it does show dark letters. The O in Fox, the Q in Quick, the, where's, <laughs> the L in Lazy, but it's not tremendous, four seconds to dry. Medium is lighter than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen. It shows some of the shading better. Brown is a very light word compared to the directly underneath it, which is quite dark. Quick does have a couple darker areas like the K and the Q. The S in jumps are very dark, six seconds to dry. The scrubby for the extra fine shows no real color variation. That's some of the color of the paper coming through. No, it is showing more color variation. Just looking. It's just not really there a whole lot in the writing. It's more there than there. The medium shows very little color variation, but we do get a little color variation up in the writing sample. How about Leuchtturm 1917 paper? Well, no bleeding, no real ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no real shading. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, the shading in the form of those dark letters. F in Fox, B in Brown, K in Quick, all darker. Four seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, about the same tone as the stub, with no feather, spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Six seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both do shows plenty of color variation, although it's not there in the medium. And 28 pound copy paper. So we do get bleed spots that occur with the medium, which is what I wrote with the top. Not too bad with the extra fine. No real ghosting on either. Wouldn't stop you from using the back of the page for either of them. The medium has feathering. Tiny little feathers all over it. Not to the point that it's distracting. Just to know that it's there. It's going to look a little blurry on some letters. No spread halo sheen or shade. The extra fine is a bit lighter than the uh, medium. With no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. One second to dry. The scrubby shows no color variation, and we didn't get any, and that is all that I have for the writing sample. So what do I think of Papier Plume's Oyster Gray? Here's a gray ink that very frequently leans kind of blue, oddly, which I really didn't care for. Now, that's just the tone. Performance-wise, it did very fine. It was adequate. It didn't have a lot of shading, but it was well-behaved on the page and with the pen. So what nib and pen is going to give your best writing experience? I found that a dry stub managed to squeeze out some color variation on this ink that frequently it didn't have. 
If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I'm going to remind you if you enjoyed it, subscribe. Thanks for watching.